Hey YouTube, can we talk about the homeschool elephant in the room? Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Grade levels. Oh my goodness. Can, we, can I just help set something straight? <laughs> Grade levels do not matter. They don't. And they don't. They don't. Okay, before I get to, like, this is super emotional for me. So please check the resources down in the descriptions. Make sure you take the master class, the three stages of homeschool. It's free, it's fast, and it will help set you up for success. Grade levels are created by people that sell curriculum because they want you to feel the pressure. If you do second grade this year, guess what they want you to do next year? That's right. They want you to do third grade because they want you to buy their third grade materials. Now, before I go too deep on this, I want you to understand I am not anti-curriculum. I'm not. My kids, we've got five sons. We homeschooled them in every way that you can think possible. Public school in a box, charter school, sharing curriculum with other people. I wrote curriculum. We did online school. Some of them did pieces of public school for high school. Four of them did dual enrollment for the last two years of high school where they got their high school diploma and associate's degrees at the same time. So I'm a firm believer that you do what's best for your child and your family, and you use the best resources to help you meet your master homeschool goals. So if you don't have your master homeschool goals, I'm going to encourage you to jot down this. So jot down a better way to homeschool, master homeschool goals, and then look up that video after you watch this one. So again, I'm not anti-curriculum, but the, the challenge that I have with curriculum is that if you think school teaching equals curriculum. What you're going to watch is you're going to watch your preschoolers and kindergartners absolutely love most of most stereotypically. They're going to love school. They're going to love the curriculum because it's all stuff that's brand new to them. They're learning their numbers and colors and shapes and that kind of stuff. And it's exciting, right? They get to use crayons and markers and stickers and glue and glitter. It's fun. Once they know how to read and they know their basic math, curriculum starts to lose its luster. And the reason is because curriculum is dry and does not take your child into consideration on that piece of paper. So if your child is a very hands-on kinesthetic learner and you hand them curriculum, that is sit at the desk or table for the next 45 minutes to five hours and complete the assignments, what you're going to watch is you're going to watch the sparkle go out in your child's eye, eyes, you're going to watch the color drain from their face. And if they're obedient and children that love to please you, then they're going to do the lessons as quickly as possible so that they can get to the other side to do what they really want to do. If you have strong-willed children, then what you're going to find is that they need to go to the bathroom. They need a drink of water. They broke their pencil. They're going to bug their brother or their neighbor. They're going to be laying on their chair rather than sitting. They're going to be huffing and puffing and hiding inside hoodies. They're just going to resist. And the reason, hear me, the reason is because both of both sets of kids, whether they're Gonna, whether they're doing what you ask them to do without complaining or whether they're pushing back, they both know that the curriculum doesn't see them. Why? Why educate your child with things that don't take their amazing, unique talents, abilities, and passions into account? Why bore them to death and consume all of their time just to complete a bunch of paper that you're going to burn at the end of the school year. You're not going to keep all that stuff. I don't keep all that stuff. It doesn't, none of that stuff is, you don't need that stuff. So then how do you look strategically at curriculum so that it doesn't chain you and drain the excitement of learning 
away from your ch- your child. It's why we created Homeschooling Olympians. It's why we have the free three stages of homeschool masterclass that is available below. It's why we offer things like the activity that shows you how your child learns and how they remember things. It's called the mind print below. When you look at your homeschool goals, and most homeschoolers that I talk to do not have them in place, so make sure you watch that video next, um, Master Homeschool Goals, because you have to have those in place. Once you have your Master Homeschool Goals in place, and you know what your goal is, so let's just take math for, for instance. If your goal for math, mathematics, is that by the time your child graduates high school, they have a firm foundation and a solid mastery of all of the basics of arithmetic, the stuff that they're going to need in real life. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, fractions, percentages, decimals, measurements, that kind of stuff. If that's the goal, then you can step back and you can you can use a math curriculum, but you can use it as a tool. You can open the unit and you can say, huh, the objective of this unit is to teach my child to multiply by zero. Do I know how to do that? Then go get some sidewalk chalk or get some manipulatives or get some dry erase markers and go to the window. You don't need the book to teach you how to teach your child how to multiply by zero. It is something that they need to understand. It's one of those basic things, but it's it's amazing how freeing it is to look at a math unit or chapter And then to look at your goal and to go, okay, master homeschool goal is understanding basic math facts. And then when you look at the assignments, when you look at the things that the the books are asking you to teach your kids, you can go, this doesn't fit with my goal. This doesn't fit with where we're headed. So you can choose to skip that thing or to approach it from a different direction. I loved using math curriculum all the way through, but I didn't use the curriculum the way that it was intended. I used it so that I had the table of contents that would show me which things the kids were learning along the way. Because I had a bunch of kids, I was able to open up all of the table of contents and see what you might not realize. And that is grade three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you look at arithmetic, the table of contents basically all look pretty much the same. They all start with addition and subtraction and multiplication and division, and they they move systematically through. It's just as the kids get, as the kids get older, my camera's backward, the numbers get bigger, right? They get more complicated. You start to add in things like decimals or fractions along the way, but you're still doing the same processes. So we did use math curriculum but the way that we used it was I would look at it. If I knew how to do it, we would shut it and I would use the whiteboard and paper or some kind of manipulative. And I would teach the lesson that way. As the kids got older, we worked on endurance of math where they would do 10 problems that we would pan pick together or 15. And then as they got closer to the high school levels, we would okay, today you're going to do all of them, et cetera. So we did do, we did use math curriculum. All the other subjects, history, science, English, but you know, English literature, all those things, we personally didn't lean heavily on curriculum. I did use some, but we filtered everything that we did through our goals. Our goal with literature wasn't that our kids would be able to identify plots and settings and be able to articulate about character development. It wasn't about rise and resolution of the the storyline. It wasn't teaching them things like the hero's journey or how to identify theme within a story. Our entire goal was that by the time our kids graduated high school, they would still love to read. And so what we did was we read a lot of books together and we listened to a lot of audio books together and the kids read independently and the kids read to each other right up until eighth grade. We really didn't do much with stories except love them 
until they were in eighth grade. So when you're looking at your curriculum, know that for any topic that you want to teach your children, there are many ways to approach that topic. Take this painting behind me. This is my youngest son's, one of his very first paintings that he ever did. Yes, he's that kid. His one of his first paintings. It's ridiculous. But say you were going to study the history of sailing. Now, you could have a textbook that teaches you all about the history of sailing with timelines and readings and chapters and reading comprehension stories or questions. And that could have quizzes and tests and final exams. That is a very traditional academic school way to approach that topic. Or you could go to the library and look up books on sailing and they could be picture books. They could be fictitious books that are, you know, tales of pirates and all kinds of things. You could just fall into the stories. You could look up documentaries. You could go to um, nautical museums. You could visit your local naval station. You could learn to sail. You could learn to, um, you could get your boating license. You can touch the water. You can learn about tides and storms at sea and bring the topic to life using things like the library, Amazon, Netflix, um, Discovery Channel. You could go to your local harbor. You could go to museums. You could interview people that have been on different types of sailing vessels. You could learn how to tie all the different knots. You could learn about knot theory. Oofed. One of my kids, my scientist kid, he's like, mom, have you ever heard of knot theory? It's fantastic. Okay. So knot theory, you could learn about the science of the winds and what things like doldrums are and those types of stuff. Though that type of learning where you touch it from all these different directions you could build a boat. You could listen to music about boats. You could explore the types of foods that people would eat on very long journeys from times long, long ago. When you approach learning from that direction versus the textbook academic, one is if your child is a very academic brain, and destined to be something like a classroom teacher, they're going to love the read and answer the questions. I loved that stuff growing up. I did because I was able to read the questions, scan for the answers and, you know, regurgitate the question. I was able to do that. And I loved it because I was destined to be a teacher. Like that was, that was who I am is who I am. But when you approach it the other way, you give space for your kids that are hands-on learners or that love to read or love to do. And you can see, are they interested in this topic? Are they interested in this topic? And which things are they more interested in? Are they interested in the stories? Are they interested in the art? Are they interested in the science? And then you can do more and more and more with that. Some people, especially critics of homeschool, believe that you need formal curriculum in order to educate your children well. And I disagree completely. I think that you need solid homeschooling goals so that you know where you're headed. I think you need to master the five pillars of homeschooling, the emotional roller coaster, establishing your routines, setting your master homeschool goals, focusing on character training, and making learning fun while applying and leaning into how your child learns best and remembers things best, right? I think if you do that and then you surround them with experiences and different types of learning, their education is so much richer than most of the kids that just have a textbook style learning. So do you need curriculum in order to teach your kids? Absolutely not. Is it bad if you use curriculum? Absolutely not. The goal as a homeschooler, though, is to not be chained to your curriculum. And I'll leave you with this. One of my very dear friends years ago, uh, she was her family was going through a very big trial. And I was watching her kids for a few of the days and she would give me their schoolwork and she was she's a check uh, check box person. She needs to check off all the boxes. And I was like, my friend, 
do you have a Sharpie? You know, one of those big markers. She goes, I do. I go, okay, take the Sharpie and just <coughs> decide not to do this one. This one has no relevance in your child's future. And I watched her. <coughs> it was very hard for her to skip things that were printed in the book. It's okay. You don't have to do all the lessons. You don't have to do all the activities. You don't need to finish all of the curriculum and you can ditch it at any time that you realize that it's not a good fit for your family. So if you have questions about curriculum, if you have a favorite curriculum, if you have opinions about not using curriculum or using curriculum, go ahead and like blow up the comments with encouragement and your favorites down below so that we can glean from each other. That's one of the most amazing things about being a part of the homeschool community is that we are looking out for each other's best interest and we are all on the same journey, bringing up our kids in a way that at the end they launch and they're still excited to learn because life is not a grade. You don't get a grade at the end. You want to be excited at the end. You want to have lived this life where you've leaned into living and that you've been teachable and learning all along the way. See you tomorrow.